explosion was at the construction site of the Crosstown Expressway, roughly at South 71 and 87th Street. That would be about a mile and a half behind me. The firefighters are right here. They have pulled back. What happened? First, a car fire at the construction site. One unit responded, noticed a fire in an adjacent building, called for backup. A couple of more units came. As they were fighting that fire, there was a tremendous explosion. A battalion chief and the driver of his car were just pulling up. They managed to get out. It's the driver of the car who's being treated at the hospital. The battalion chief was uninjured. More units arrived to try to fight a spreading fire. They discovered that there were more explosives, ammonia nitrate to be exact, that's used in clearing uh, the path for the roadway. Everyone pulled back, and then there was a second tremendous explosion. There has been some damage to the surrounding area. Anyway, after they pulled back, they sent a helicopter in to see what could be seen. Nothing could be seen. There's just a tinge of daybreak happening at this hour. They're going to wait until there's plenty of light and then go in and see what happened to the six firefighters who are missing, possibly two security guards. We Catherine. understand that uh, the fire department on the scene now has been unable to make contact with those six firefighters that were on the scene first. There has been no contact with those firefighters and when the helicopter flew over the area because there was so much smoke and because it is dark, they couldn't even see a fire truck. They're not sure what's going on in there or what's left in there. They're hoping for the best, however. Steve, you say they're waiting for daybreak. Their number one concern is not only those six firemen, but also how to secure the area and those existing explosives. Any idea on how they're going to handle that? Uh, I don't think they have an idea on how they're going to handle that. The aerial survey did reveal at least two more storage units containing an unknown quantity of this ammonia nitrate. That's the explosives, again, that have already detonated twice. They don't want any more explosions. Those magazines appear to be several hundred feet away from the fire, so hopefully there's not a lot of danger there. But at this point, they're just not going to take any chances that they don't have to. All right, Steve, thanks for that information right now. We'll, of course, check back in with Since you. It is feared they were killed in the first explosion. Now, that second blast happened just before 5 this morning. As we've told you throughout the morning, we have several crews on the scene. Our Steve Nichols joins us live. Steve, they've been waiting for the sun to come up. What's the latest now? Catherine, as you can see, the sun is only now beginning to uh, break over, so it's not even light yet. Once it is light, some search crews will go in. I have again with me Harold Canabi of the Kansas City Fire Department. What is the plan once you can get somebody in there? Well, uh, the plan will be as soon as uh, it's light enough where uh, the team can go in on foot to where they can uh, start to search and uh, naturally the uh, first efforts will be to try to locate the firefighters that are in there. Then uh, they will move additional personnel in trying to uh, finish securing the area and make sure that uh, the danger of additional explosion is over but uh, the primary uh, concern is going to be trying to locate the firefighters. You mentioned securing the area. There is a continuing risk at that scene? Absolutely, because of the, the fact that uh, the, the explosion itself, they're not sure just how much of the product may have been thrown throughout the area, and uh, this is another reason for uh, daybreak, is they want to make sure that no one steps on anything that may cause another explosion and uh, create additional injuries. So uh, there is definitely still concern that there may be uh, additional explosions. Uh, the two magazines that they were able to uh, spot from air uh, indicated that uh, they seem to be intact, but until they can get a close visual of it, uh, they probably won't give the all clear for a while. I understand there is still a considerable amount of explosives on that construction site. Uh, there are in the uh, two magazines, we understand this is where the dynamite is uh, stored and uh, at this point it doesn't appear that they have been damaged but uh, there are still several small fires that are burning there but until uh, they can get in and take a very close look at it uh, and determine that it is safe uh, it won't be until then that they give the all clear for uh, additional personnel then to move into the area. Are we still say half an hour or so away from crews going in? I would guess at least uh, 30 to 40 minutes yes. Thank you very much. Harold Kanabi of the Kansas City Fire Department. Again, six firefighters, possibly two security guards, missing at this hour at a construction site about a mile and a half from where I am, which is at South Highway 71 and Bannister Road. Back to you, Catherine. Steve, if you could stand by for a minute and, yes. and answer a few questions for me. Let's just go step by step with what happened this morning. All right. Initially, there was a car fire. 
fairly simple matter, and one crew responded. As they fought that, they noticed this was at a construction site for the Crosstown Expressway at about uh, South Highway 71 and 87th Street. They responded to the car fire, noticed another fire in an adjoining structure of some sort across the road. So they called for backup, and more units came. As they were fighting that fire, there was a tremendous explosion, and that's where the crews were lost. More crews came in to try to figure out what was going on. We were fighting, at this point, several fires, and they noticed that there were more explosives around. They pulled back. They pulled back before that second explosion. The first explosion was at about 4.10, 4.15. The second explosion was at about 4.50. Both of them tremendous explosives. You could hear them, if you happen to be up at that hour, and many people were even asleep, all across town. To give you some idea, it was 30,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate going up in the first blast, 15,000 pounds in the second blast. That is a lot of explosives, and that's why if you got shook out of bed this morning, Ray, it happened. And uh, the uh, primary uh, uh, duties will be to try to locate the firefighters and uh, see what the extent is there. Here, when those firefighters went in there this morning, did they have any indication that there were explosives on the site? Did they have any idea that there might be some kind of a hazard? Uh, at this point, uh, we really don't know uh, how much information uh, they obtained from uh, uh, the security people that was there. Uh, we understand uh, what happened there, that uh, there was two security people on duty and uh, they were checking the area because one of them indicated that they did see someone in the area. As they left, uh, cruising the area, came back, the vehicle, the pickup truck, was on fire. And uh, that's when they notified the fire department. And then after the fire department got here, it's when they uh, noticed the glow from atop the hill. And that's when the uh, additional unit was called. So uh, at this time, uh, we don't know what the rest of the chain of events were. A second explosion rocked the area uh, just a few minutes afterwards, actually about 40, 40 minutes after the first explosion. The first explosion in the time frame here occurred at about 4.10 a.m. this morning. A second explosion rocked the area at about 4.50 a.m. Uh, that was described as a second shed which contained another 15,000 pounds of the ammonium nitrate. Now, the ammonium nitrate essentially is known as fertilizer in the, in the uh, business. It's used as a catalyst for dynamite when they uh, use it to clear roadways with. It's highly explosive, has a very high flash point, and uh, the concern at this point, obviously, is uh, for those six firefighters. This is Barney McCoy uh, at the scene right now at 71 Highway in Bannister. As we get more information, we'll be right back. Reed Black, back to you. They need daylight right, to check Thanks. on those crews that have been missing. There is also concern of some, ammo some more ammonia nitrate in the area about 45,000 pounds of ammonia nitrate, and that's where our Steve Nichols comes in. He has been standing live at the command post at Bannister Road in Hickman Mills. Steve, let me start out with this question. Is it safe for people to leave their homes with that concern of the remaining ammonia nitrate? You mean people who live immediately in the area? Correct. Uh, yes, they would probably want to evacuate if they live real close to this site. However, I understand there are only three or four houses that are considered to be in a danger area and they were evacuated more than a couple of hours ago. I'm sure they were shook out of bed by the initial explosions. Uh, they may not have any glass left in their house, but we have heard no reports of civilian injuries, at least not at this location. The, uh, the game here has turned into a different sort of waiting. A few minutes ago, we saw two cars and a van and a fire truck move up closer to the actual blast location, which is about a mile and a half behind me. Uh, these guys got out on foot. We understand they are both policemen and firemen. The police bomb squad members and some fire uh, firefighters got out and are now in there on foot. Standard procedure around explosions because the uh, electrical charges from radio transmitters can occasionally detonate explosives. There will be no radio contact. So all the communications with that crew will be done by foot. They are now presumably on location or approaching the location. They will walk through, try to find the firefighters, uh, and then come back out and tell everyone else what's going on. They'll also look around, make sure there's no explosives on the ground so nobody steps on anything and uh, set off another explosive. Uh, on the two security guards, they are secure. So the concern now is for the six firefighters who have not been heard from for more than two hours now. The two security guards, uh, there were questions about are safe, we understand.